Um, better make sure this working. Okay. Okay. Ah, yeah, it's working. Anywho, heroes unite. Uh, yeah. Um, sorry, a bit frazzled. Been having a panic attack. Yada yada yada. If you've watched any of my videos or have met me in real life. You know the drill, so to speak. Also, as of my hair being extremely fluffy, take that up with the shampoo. And natural family genetics. I seriously can't defluffify it. It's that is even a phrasing. But anywho, this is actually going to be a bit different. Normally, I would do toy reviews of just one Transformer. But this is going to be one on three. It came in a two-pack. And before you start asking how that even makes any sense, don't ask me. I have absolutely no idea how that even works. I guess it's because one of them is a Minicon. Uh, I don't know who the person is that's watching, but if they could type, I'd appreciate it so I can know. I'm fine if they can't, but still. Knowing my luck, it's probably one or two people on my Discord, which links in the description. First time me ever saying that, I think. I'm not entirely sure. But that being... <laughs> hey, Abigail. Anywho, that being beside the point, um, basic... Oh. Okay, I guess something happened with her Wi-Fi or whatever. Because now it's saying zero people are watching. Anywho. Uh, yeah, as you can see, I will be reviewing Starscream and Vector Prime. And his Minicon partner, Safeguard. So, um, yeah, let's see how I'm going to do this. Well, first... These three thingies. And let's make sure it's showing up right. Yeah. These three thingies. One of the... A few... Two of these might have come from another box, but one I know came from this actual box. I, I guess I'll just put these up here. Now, let me... My papa kind of re-put everything back in weirdly. But, for the most part, this is the box. And as you see, it was all... Nope, nope, wrong side. It's all, It was only from Toys R Us. So, a very hard find to get. Um, let's see if I can... You know, I'll worry about opening it and trying to get all the stuff out at the very end for the purpose of not making a big mess on the floor. That way, if I do, I can clean it up when I get done. Because let's be honest, who wants to watch a toy review? Who wants to watch a stream that's supposed to be a toy review, but instead about a 20-something-year-old guy cleaning up a mess that he made on the stream? Last I checked, no, people, no one's going to want to watch that. So, yeah, there's, there's that. Um, anywho, also, it's kind of damaged here on the bottom. I don't know if I did that when I was opening it or if it was already like that. But anywho, I'm going to be reviewing Vector Prime and his Minicon partner Safeguard first. I, as my name states, I'm a fan of heroes, and Vector Prime is the good guy in the group. Anywho, it says Vector Prime outmatches Starscream in wits and strengths, but the ancient Autobot is pushed to the limits of even his incredible power. 
by the demands of the search for the planet keys and the defense of Cybertron from its countless enemies. Forced to use his remarkable time traveling abilities to constantly hop between dimensions, he finds himself weakened during the frequent skirmishes with Decepticon forces. Nonetheless, he must persevere for nothing less than the survival of the universe is at stake. However, if you take into the account of what they were saying in the TV show about it, I'd say it wasn't just a universe. And I guess I'm now going to have to go to my history. I did not have a certain web page opened up. The reason why, despite the fact that It was Vector Prime, and I just read. He's the only one who actually has two completely different bios. That it's because he there was the Toys R Us exclusive variation, which comes with Starscream. Only way to get a small version of Starscream in America. I'm saying that because if you have done your research, you'd know that Starscream had is a supreme class version in America. Now, <coughs> you know what? I don't care anymore. I really don't care at this point. Anywho, hopefully my voice will stay in working form until I can get this done, but essentially you can get Starscream as Supreme Class. That one I am going to get later, but bef most people would probably be saying, oh, they're the same thing, yada yada yada, just one's bigger. Well, no, they, they may have the same disguise mode and generalized appearance, but Different paint job, different accessories. I'll go into that in more detail, but when I go to Starscream. But basically, Vector Prime, the 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 version of Starscream I have, I am wanting to get both either way for the fact that I'm going to make a stop motion recreation of the whole entire series on here. But. I'm going to do that later. I'm also going to essentially create an epilogue to give some level of storyline to Tor exclusive Transformers. Like, there's some, like, the one off the top of my head that I can think of is the Transformer Excelion. Looks just like Hotshot, different paint job, but never shown in a TV show. But that aside, Vector Prime had two versions. No. Well, two American versions in different packagings, I mean. For the most part, they're completely identical. The thing is, you can just... The only difference was you could get him with Starscream or without. Starscream, Vector Prime is a Voyager class. And... Yeah. But anywho, I read the Toys R Us exclusive version. Now here's the one if you got Vector Prime by himself. Vector Prime is one of the first Transformers, a powerful, wise, and incredible, incredibly ancient warrior. He has served as protector over Cybertron. Fat tongue plus dry lips plus mustache plus sore throat equals my tongue gets tied and I can't get my words out. Anywho, apart from a bit of my bio, um, <laughs> he, he served back to Vector Prime's bio. He served as protector over Cybertron since its beginnings, pulled out of the shadows of time by a distress signal broadcast by his damaged planet. There I go again. Planet, he arrives too late to save Cybertron without assistance. Arising from an era in which all Transformers lived in harmony, he is unaware of the conflict between the Autobots and the Decepticons, a fact that Megatron uses to trick him and steal the map to the Lost Planets and the Planet Keys. Realizing his mistake, he joins Optimus Prime and pledges his knowledge and skill to the desperate quest to retrieve the Planet Keys before Megatron. Also, hey Golden Piglet, I know you typed several minutes ago, but 
as Abigail and 90% of everyone else who's met me can attest to, when I get going, there ain't no stopping me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, that's actually a quality I might need to work on in some cases. But that aside, I don't mind if you ask any questions. But, oh yeah, before I forget, because of the crazy annoyingness that happened last time, I wasn't actually able to show off a section of jet fire. Now, I don't know if it even got shown, but of course, if it didn't, someone else can mention, and I was going, I think I was going to mention this, but for the life of me, I don't remember if I did, but... The cannons on Optimus Prime also double as a hose, and on Jetfire, he has some very detailed doors on him. And there are some little details here and there that are messed up in the molding, as with all Transformers. Well, most Transformers have some details here and there messed up with the paint, but Jetfire is the first one that I've known about, and it has a bit of a molding issue. I don't know why that happened. I have not seen any report on it, and hello, I just got two more people joining. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just went from two watching to four watching. Usually it doesn't go up more than just one at a time. Anywho, Vector Prime, as you know, and there's all, if you watch the Transformer series, you know that for the most part, there's a number of different Primes. There's Vector Prime, Optimus Prime, Sentinel Prime, Micronus Prime, Solus Prime, this, that, and the other. There are many Primes and many, well, realities. However, with the exception of Transformers Animated, most of the time there's only one Prime that's in the show. To the point to where usually when you watch a show... It's just one Transformer that's named Prime, and then that's it. They may make reference to older Primes, like in the series that's actually called Transformers Prime. They made reference to Solus Prime and her hammer, the Forge of Solus Prime. Odd name, even brought, even to the extent of some Transformers made reference to it being an odd name. Even to the extent a bulkhead was saying something about just whacking a Decepticon with it, and Optimus Prime's like, it's not that kind of hammer. <laughs> but, I don't know the full details. Supposedly, like in Minecraft or like in Pixelmon, you can just hit something with the hammer, and you use it in standard metalworking, and it just makes something out of nothing, essentially, similar to how the Lord works but a more, I guess you could say, mortal robot alien means, if that's even good terminology. But anywho, usually when a prime is mentioned in a show, other than the current base prime, it's mentioned as a part of history. Like something that happened a millennia before the current storyline that you're watching, not like two episodes ago. Cybertron series was the only exception, but that makes perfect sense because, again, most primes are from the past. Vector Prime travels through time, so he existed outside of time, as mentioned in his bio, from the past and went to real life. Or, not real life, but went to the at that point, the present, which is technically our past, which gets all kinds of confusing because they also did something similar to that in G1 because that was supposed to take place in the 1980s and then the series continued and was taking place in 2005 and this was still before the year 2000 came up, so then 2005 was the future, and then 2005 came, and it's the present, now it's the past, but, uh, as many people have said in many places, both in fiction and in their life, time travel is confusing. <laughs> but, the point I'm trying to get at is, usually there's only one Prime. A lot of times, that's usually only going to be Optimus Prime and 
that's it. But when you go to Transformers Animated, usually Prime is the highest possible ranking a Transformer can have. And there is a Transformer called Ultra Magnus. He's in most reality variations, but there are some where he's not. Like in the Cybertron series, he has some Cybertron toys, but it's nothing more than a repackage of a toy from a different toy line that the story somehow goes and they went, it, he got, tr they traversed realities and went from their reality to this one along with an Optimus Prime who in that reality was somehow his brother. Whole another storyline that I can get into at a later point. But for the most part, Ultra Mag, a bit about Ultra Magnus, he, he in most realities is a friend of Optimus Prime's and like his second in command or something. I'm still debating, I'm still trying to figure out the ranking. It is confusing at certain intervals. Yeah, Abigail's right. But, anywho, the, the thing is, for the most part, Ultra Magnus is a rank under Optimus Prime. Irrelevant of if that's second in command or lower. But in the Transformers Animated, they completely reversed that to where Optimus Prime was like a noob and had no idea what the heck he was doing. Where he what where his bio seems similar to Optimus Primal in Beast Wars, which I already previously discussed in the Optimus Prime video. You want to know more about that? Check it out or visit TF Wiki. Though, if you don't like cuss words or certain language and phrasings that shouldn't be used except in certain PG-13 movies and TV shows and whatnot, then I'd recommend either A, not going there, or B, have someone witness it while you're going there for security purposes. Despite it being one of the best places to get information, it it is annoying. And I know that the whole what I uh, <laughs> I was about to say, where did I go? But anywho, I know that the CyberKey code website says tfwiki.net, but that is a that's essentially a subsection of tfwiki. That one doesn't have anything inappropriate in it. Well. Not the specific web page that I gave the link to. Maybe little links that add on to it. So I would recommend you be careful what you click on. But either way, back to a, a little bit of Transformers Animated. Basically, that Optimus Prime, like Optimus Primal, wasn't actually supposed to be a leader. He just simply put, he was part of a maintenance crew, yada, 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 did this, that, and the other. And then Megatron came up, and they somehow caught wind of that, took it upon themselves to try to help, yada, yada, yada. Almost the same exact storyline to an extent. But, either way, where most versions of Optimus Prime are like the great, grand, and glorious leader of the Autobots, that version, well, he was essentially the equivalent of a team of janitors. <laughs> or the leader of a team of janitors. That, that was essentially what he was. However, as the series progressed, he, he started to follow the basis for 90% of Optimus Prime's. But my point is this, there, the rank of Prime is actually lower. In which, interesting fact, when a Transformer has the name Prime in their name, that's not like a standard, just, oh, hey, they just have this name. No, it's actually essentially a rank. It's like the rank of Commander or something. But... Anywho, okay.
but oh ow but yeah this is vector prime with safeguard attached and there's also firebot over here and Thunderwing over here. They're not part of this toy line. And before you start asking any questions about that, they're not part of the Cybertron toy line. I did that to demonstrate his Power Link's capabilities. Of course, as you can see, he is a ancient Cybertronian starfighter of sorts. And... Um... Hold on a sec. I uh, don't know if it's showing up, but... Ah, the underside's probably better. He, as you can see, he has little gears all over it. Um... Uh. See if I can Okay. Uh... Sorry if the camera's jittery, that's not fully the camera. My blood flow in my arm is so much my arm's kind of shaking. But As you can kind of see, he has gears all over the place. Really weird for a Transformer, but if you think about it... Uh, Ben F? What do you mean, Christian? I just read your comments. Thank you, Christian. Very cool. Are you talking to me, or... Well, I'll just let you type it when you're ready. I'm not going to hold the stream up for that. But anywho, yeah. And I think these are supposed to be guns. I'm not sure. And as you can see, little satellite things here. And then he has landing gear. Now, funny thing. I have no idea if he was a... Well, let me move that. If he was essentially made to do this, but this actually is very reminiscent of the show. I just, though I do gotta say, I wonder why the Transformers won't roll here. I mean, they got really good wheels. They even roll on carpet for some reason. Every surface except the desk. So, you got me as to... Why it's doing that. And I'm trying to get it to kind of zoom in on the wheels. It, well, it's kind of showing up, but anywho, um, he has three power links ports, which that's essentially where mini cons can link to a transformer. Let me go ahead and not break the toy. Anywho, this is. It mostly is Starscream and Vector Prime, but I saw it I'd clarify. This is Sunderwing. Now, I'll just move that in there. Like a finger! This one's a bit older, like from the year 2003. A very old Transformer and one of the first ones that I actually got. It also came with Firebot and Fireflight. Not gonna review Fireflight. I actually broke him, essentially. It's not because I played rough. 
it's not I played too much. Just your standard play with a toy for a few years, it breaks concept. He had no power links capabilities. Also, he's the only Transformer I got that's actually a Wrecker. Essentially, he has the disguise mode of a fighter jet, has a dual missile launcher that you can launch the missile separately if you can actually manipulate the launcher the right way, and the nose part of the jet can convert into a shield that doubles as a sword, and in robot mode can be like a claw. But anywho, what I was trying to show was this. It, I can't really show it that well in here without activating a feature on him. But basically, as you can see, it pivots. That's because currently, Thunderwing is essentially acting as a buzzsaw or a shuriken, which I'm saying because some Transformers that share his chassis essentially can do that. He's a member of the Air Military Minicon team. Now, if you move this down and that down and flip those there, you essentially get him in robot mode. That right, this right here is the power links port, and as you can see, he has two missile racks containing three missiles each. I mean, it's very blurred right now. Let me see if I can... Well, it kind of is showing up. I mean, you can see the shadows, but you can't see it in full detail. But then again, it's a Minicon. Most Minicons don't have a lot of detail to show in the first place. It also doesn't help when the camera somehow does that. But that's not his only disguise mode. In fact, if you lift that up and flip the arms like that and then do that, He's essentially a stealth bomber. Sorry that my hands are in the way, but tiny transformer, what you gonna do? Maybe if I... Nope. Come on. Work with me here. There. And now over here. Not sure if it's showing. Doesn't look like it is. But if you can see it, that's the Minicon symbol. Just like Autobots and Decepticons, Minicons also have a symbol. No, that's not a Beyblade. It's a Transformer. And Ben F., were you talking to me when you said, thank you, Christian, very cool, or were you talking to someone else? Because I know Christian is both my religion, and I also know it's the name of people. So, that's why I'm asking. But anywho, for the most part, that is Thunderwing. Now, as you should be able to see, he has essentially four bombs. Now, uh, I don't know if you can see all that well. Uh, but if you look at the nose cone, you'll see it kind of has a bump. The reason why... On this one, I'm not really sure I can show it that well, but the nose cone is essentially rubbery. To me, it feels reminiscent of an eraser. I think for some stupid reason I tried to use it as an eraser, but I don't know. It's not a Bakugan either. It's a Transformer. I mean, seriously, are you not reading the... Are, I mean... 
not trying to be rude, but are you not reading the title? Transformer Cybertron Vector Prime's Minicon Safeguard and Starscream Toy Review Livestream. It literally tells you right there what the, what I'm talking about. It's Transformers. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind answering questions, but come on, people. It's a Transformer Toy Review. Why would I be having Bakugan or Beyblade in it? Also, funny thing, I don't have any Bakugan or Beyblade. <laughs> the funny thing is, one of my cousins had a Bakugan, but I don't know if he still has it, and I have known a few people who have Beyblade. I also have some essentially cheapo Beyblades, but the launcher blo bro uh, bloke broke. I mean, they aren't actually Beyblades, they're just tops that have spikes on them, and that's it. <laughs> Essentially, it's what you get when a Dollar Tree tries to make that. But anywho, that's it for Sunderwing. He's a member of the Air Military Minicon team. Now, uh, now as you can see, this is Firebot. He's the leader of the Emergency Minicon team, and he's a bit more complicated. Now, on Thunderwing, he only showed how to transform from robot to the stealth bomber. The other stuff, I kind of just, if anything, I found out just two or three months ago. Maybe two or three years ago. But anywho, this is Firebot. As you can tell, currently he's in his weapon pod mode. As you can see, two missile racks containing six missiles each. Now, those... I'm not even sure if it's showing up, but those, I'm not sure what they are, I'm just going to say, for my imagination purposes, I'm saying they're flamethrowers. I mean, most trans, when tra when they're tra there's a bunch of transformers that have a disguise mode of a fire truck or something, that have that, have some flamethrower, and then I essentially just took the hose off, it's one of those can be detached things if you put too much force. As you can see, it just kind of goes in there. So, take that, put it over to the side. Now, if I can get a grip, do that, twist these around. This gets also twisted, boom. And as you can see, those little things wind up being at the back. Now, yep, it's doing it again. And there's the Minicon symbol right there. Those two things that look like sirens are the Power Links ports. Now, as you can see, he's a fire engine. This might be one of the best quality ones I've done. I wonder what happened. I mean, we took the computer in, got it repaired, and the camera updated, but still. Anywho, not only does he have a fire engine thing, he has, this is what I call his flight mode. Many Transformers will have, I've seen many Transformers be a vehicle and then you just flip out some wings or something and they become a flight mode. And Minicons, I mean, look, you can literally see the front where the joints are for his feet. That's a common quality among Minicons. So if I find a, so when you find a Minicon that actually has very good details. Good. I mean, many cons are not full of articul a lot of articulation, but they are very easy to transform. But at the risk of articulation for the most part, and 
aesthetics. But he also, if you do that and then flip this up like normal, you can form what I call Cybertronian tank. Now that's different from the weapon pod. These are essentially folded down and sometimes I gotta take this out. Now I doubt I can even show it because again very tiny focus going wonky but let's see if I can Now, right behind here, on both sides, it has a very tiny groove. I can barely see it even without the camera. But, and then... Come on, camera. As you can see, two little headlights. And I don't know why, but that always reminds me of a stop sign. I even remember when I first opened it, I'm like, Mommy, why does this fire engine have a stop sign on its roof? Which, by the way, I'm actually quoting myself. I was around five or so at the time. I remember I, it was a Christmas present. I just looked under the tree, and I'm like, ah! Because the first thing I'm thinking is, Ooh, fire engine and airplanes! I didn't even know what the heck a transformer was at that point. I just saw the word transformer. <laughs> but, I mean, at that time, the only time I had ever heard it is, oh, a transformer blew. That's why we don't have electricity. Which, naturally, if, which every time someone says a transformer blew, I'm thinking of these guys now. <laughs> which, they actually made that joke in an episode of Transformers. But, anywho, you move these down, these out not open that, which that was something I found out accidentally. The instructions only show how to go from robot to fire truck and back. And then you move this thing down. But anywho, I noticed this and in the middle of transforming it came undone and I'm like, ah, I broke it! And I'm like, ooh, what are these red things? Hello, it's got missiles! At first, I thought I was just joking around because I saw an appearance and was like, hmm, this is cool. Until I did some research a few years back, I'm like, oh, it's actually supposed to do that. But let's see if I can actually... Oh, hey! And I, no, and I didn't stand up Thunderwing because it takes forever for me to stand them up. Well, um, I'm trying to show you something interesting on them. If it'll zoom in right, it'll... There. If you look right at the top of his head, it looks almost like he has a fireman's helmet. And you can see two eyes. You can also see these little missile racks here. But, yeah, right there's the head. Now, this up here is the hands, and these down here are what I call the flamethrowers. Oh, hello, he just fell. So, flamethrower, and... As you can see, it almost looks like fingers. Thundercracker has that too, but uh, Thundercracker, wrong Thunder Transformer, Thunderwing 
has those too, but they're very tiny fit. They're very tiny fists. Like, really? Tiny? Boop! Tiny fists. <laughs> Anywho, um, so very hard to show, but because of what Rumble and Frenzy and G1 and in most versions have, I say those are pile drivers or battering rams. And usually, if I can do it on here, he's the leader of the emergency minicon team, I might add. I do that. It it doesn't click or fit in a place, it just is kind of there. But that's the general pose I put them in. Anywho, let's actually see here. Uh, take that back. Unlike the others, I'm not really going to show much. I mean, there's some Transformers from the Cybertron series and that are going to be here, so that have the same chassis as Firebot and Thunderwing. So I'll show those at a later time. But as you can see, kinda, well, maybe not. Hey, see, this is why I wasn't gonna show it. I'll see if I can. Yeah, it's not really focusing, and it kind of did for a split second, but if you could, you could see the little fingers in there. Um, it's just when he keep. Oh, um. No, 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 no. No, the toy's not 20 years old. I got it in around 2003 or so, give or take. I'm not... I'm not 100% sure. At the time, I was just happy I got an airplane. <laughs> so I seriously don't remember anything. I mean, for the whole day, I'm just like, woo, 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 woo. Doing that for literally the whole day, and everyone's like, will you put the stupid thing down? And I'm like, no, I got an airplane. And then I threw it. Threw it trying to make it fly. And I didn't get it when I was five years old. I think I was in third grade. I'm not fully sure, but... Also, Ben F, no, not going to make this, I am not going to make this a 24-hour stream. It's a toy review. Now, if I was doing Minecraft and didn't have to worry about lack of sleep, then sure, I wouldn't mind doing it. But toy reviews require a lot more talking. And as Abigail can vouch, I am a talkative person. The problem is... As she can also vouch, you gotta rest your throat, or it will severely hurt you. Usually I don't talk in the stream at all, so this is kind of a new thing for me. Usually I just don't at all. Oh, and as you can see, those are thrusters. And I'm sorry about moving the camera around so much. It's just there is no specific place to put it. And my arms kind of hurt, so... Yeah, but yeah, as Abigail said, I I can't help it. And the thing is, I'm 
Sometimes I'm not shaking the camera. Sometimes the camera just looks like it's shaking. I've had that happen when I'm talking to people on Discord as well. It, even when the camera's on the computer like it is, and I'm not doing anything to make it shake, it, it still does that. Also, due to a combination of multiple things, I don't have a steady hand. Now, uh, there are some paint applications that should be different, like that is supposed to be red. Here, I'll show you. Now, if I can just grab this. As you can see, I'm trying to Well, this is about as best I can do. But as you can see, it doesn't quite match the picture. I mean, the wings are different. There's just a bit of paint missing here and there. Not like it got scraped off, it just... You know, if you know Transformers, you know Hasbro. I mean... If you know Hasbro, you know Transformers. They they do weird things. Some Transformers even would be a bit more accurate in Japan and vice versa. Uh, Elliot Anime? Well, you'd have to tell me who you are or I can't be unblocking you. Because when you just pop into it, I think I speak for all YouTubers when I say, when you just pop into someone's chat and say, unblock me, that raises a lot of questions. No, you know what, wait, Barton, uh, wait a minute, um, oh, um, I'll do that later. I I understand. Uh, let me. You know what? Let me maybe check your channel real quick. I understand what you were saying. I just haven't gotten a chance to talk with my staff, and I'm still waiting for a message back. And YouTube is not loading right. Thank you. But I have Discord currently turned off. Normally in my streams I'd have Discord on, but I have it off for the sake of trying to essentially get this all taken care of. Oh, of course. Well, then all I can say is Abigail Sincher, a channel moderator and someone who works on my server, Wait a minute. Um, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do much checking here. So, I'm going to leave that background checking to you, Abigail, since you're both the, moderate, the only moderator on here, on my channel, and you work on my server. Just All I'm saying is just check his channel, see if he's telling the truth. He... Okay, long story short, I have this massive idiotic troll on my server who has lit on my Discord server who's gotten on there like 30 something times on 20 something alternate accounts. Me and Abigail have literally been banning him, it, him like crazy, and this guy might actually be someone associated with him. He's claiming someone took control of his Discord account, started spamming a message, yada, yada, yada. And we're trying to, and the people, and me and the staff on my server, which includes Abigail, are trying to figure out if he's telling the truth, what's going on, yada, yada, yada. Because currently, we're completely in the dark. 
So unless one of us can like go over there and knock door to door asking around, we are just like, uh, should we trust this person? Should we not? Should we trust him? Should we not? He, this guy who's wanting me unblocking him, goes to the school of this troll, knows him on a, I know him in real life situation, but at the same time claims that he's not friends, but because I've had a lot of other people do that on my server, and then I later find out that they're that they're working for them, I'm not sure what to go on here. I mean, I do want to trust them. I really do, because I have been falsely accused myself. And let's be honest, who wants to be falsely accused of anything? But at the same time, I have a duty to protect those people on my server and make sure that they're safe at the same time. So I'm really stuck between a rock and a hard place. I, On one hand, if he's associated with this troll, and, okay, you don't have to do that. In fact, I'm deleting that because I comment because I don't want people using God's name in vain on here. I understand your point, but I'm just saying i got to figure out what's right mutually. Because a few people on my server who I did ban because... Okay, well, yeah, well, if I'm being honest, 90% of people do that anyway. It's really dead. <laughs> I mean, except when this troll gets on, pretty much no one is even on the server. That That is very horrible. Yeah, it's really bad. He, he, he's done a bunch of stuff. I won't go into it. It's on my server. I'm sure Abigail can help direct you to that if you need it. But either way, I need to figure out what's going on here because I have this troll. This guy's claiming that he's associated or says that he knows the person and that he goes to school with him but is not friends with him which is also the same thing that was said by a number of other people who at later dates I randomly found out they were working with the troll because certain little pieces of data I gave to them, he got a hold of, yada, 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 and then they started showing troll qualities, and it became very obvious they were doing the same thing. So, on one hand, I don't, want to falsely accuse someone of anything because I've been falsely accused a number of times because of my ADHD. Many times I've told people I have ADHD or some other mental disorder of that I have, like ADHD, OCD, yada, 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 and they automatically think I'm a natural born killer or I'll naturally do something very, very cringe-worthy or inappropriate or something that would make everyone look at me and want to arrest me for one reason or another, which highly infuriates and saddens me. It's like, just because I have these disorders does not make me immediately associated with this. It's like, for instance, I'm a guy, but I hate sports. So, on one hand, I... I don't want to falsely accuse anyone of anything. But at the same time, I don't want to falsely trust them either. And seeing as I'm kind of stuck in the middle, I mean, I'm sure Abigail and 90% of people that I met on Discord can agree with me. Sometimes it's hard to tell who you can trust and who you can't. You just got to kind of, I guess you could say, roll with the punches, so to speak. Where, I mean, on one hand, you don't want to falsely accuse someone and immediately assume, oh, because this, and they're going to do that, or whatever. But at the same time, and just assume the worst. But at the same time, you need to be careful about who you do trust, because I've had a number of cases, I've had a, case where I trusted someone, thought they were my friend, and then they just turned around on me and became one of my worst enemies. Literally saying, I only became friends with you because I pitied you, and I was sad, and I felt sorry for you and that you had no friends. Even though that happened in third grade, it still hurts more than a knife through the heart. 
or whatever other painful experience you can think of. That might not be the best option nowadays, but the point I'm trying to get at is that, that hurts, and I've suffered a lot of pain. So, I mean, I have trust issues as a general whole, which I'm sure most people do nowadays, and with the internet, you never know who you can really trust, and sometimes it's hard to trust people even if you meet them in real life, because you could meet someone in real life and be like, oh, okay, you're trustworthy, and then next thing you know, they betray you or something, and then try to, I don't know, everything from rob you to hopes, lies, and rumors about you on who knows where, some even going so far as, well, things that would cause them to get arrested, I'm not saying because I made a bully video and somehow that got put as a restricted video. I think I know why, but I'm going to need to contact the YouTube officials to get that figured out. I I really don't know. But yeah, I'll get back to the toy review. I'm just stating that for my server right now, I just got a Elliot's anime. I just gotta talk with my team, figure this out, because on one hand, as someone who's been falsely accused, I, I do want to trust you. But on the other... I don't want to put my server at risk, so I guess just hold hold on until I can check. I mean, I'm not saying you're lying. I just, currently I'm just a bit unsure. I mean, I don't want to falsely accuse you, but I don't want to falsely trust you either and be like, oh sure, they're a good kid and then next thing I know you turn right back around and then completely betray me. Not saying you would, I've just I've just had some cases like that and know a few people who have too, so I, j I just need a little bit more time to think about it. It, I mean, if if you want, I guess you can talk to that friend of yours who's on my Discord to essentially brief you and work through him and have him post stuff on your behalf. I don't mean sharing an account, no. I just mean, like, let's say I'm not available and I give a message to Abigail and say, hey, can you relay this to the people on my server on my behalf, yada, 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 where... She still types it on her account out of her own free will, but I don't and whatnot. Um, well, that's that's between you and her. I mean, she is a staff member on my server, and as I said, you need to talk to staff members to figure um, some out. I mean, ultimately, that's your decision. Right now, I'm trying to discuss this among some staff members, but... They're not always own, so I'm kind of stuck. I mean, as I said, I want to trust you, but I also want to keep my server safe. So right now, just immediately letting you back on until I get all my information. Right now, that that would not be helpful on all sides. That might be helpful on your side, but I need to find... As a hero and a server owner... I need to find a solution that's mutually beneficial to all parties. So, I haven't found that yet. Once I do, I'll... Once I do, I will unblock you for a second, send a message, or I will get a hold of your friend who's on my server and send him the message, yada, yada, yada. Either way, the point I'm trying to get at is, once I have information, I'll let you know. I Now... As someone who's been banned from a few servers myself for bad reasons, or wrong, basically wrong reasons, and I was wrongly accused and whatever, or for some stupid reason, I understand when you get banned on a server and you did nothing wrong, you want to get back on. So I get that. I'm just saying, I'm not going to punish you any further, as I don't really think I can, but... Just, just know this, I, 
I would very much appreciate it if you wouldn't ask me to unblock you anymore. As was your friend. I, I understand you're wanting to get back on. I, I get that. I am not mad at you. I'm just saying, it's kind of starting to get on my nerves, dude. I'm not going to, like, say, nope, I'm just going to forever ban you if you keep this up. No, I'm just saying, one thing that would definitely show that you trust me and show that you can be trusted, I know one thing for sure is just stop asking me to unblock you. When I have the answer, I am giving you my word here and now. When I have the information I need to make my decision, I will inform you. Until then, you got two choices. Well, two things you can do. One, talk to your friend and see if he can help you get in contact with any staff members that you currently don't. And you discuss with them the problem, explain to them, get their input on it, and tell them to talk to me. And two, maybe do something that can give irrefutable evidence of what you're saying is true. Other than that, the only thing you can do is just wait until I've checked it out. But if you truly do trust me like you say, and you truly are against Baker, then please, for both our sakes, stop asking. Because not only is that annoying, but Baker is, Baker is, well, yeah, I guess the name's out now. Baker is the name of the troll, but basically he, well, he's kind of essentially doing the same thing you are with the asking, can you unblock me? So, in this case, it's kind of not helping your case by constantly saying, will you unblock me? That's exactly what Baker and his so-called goons are doing. Now, I am sure, knowing my luck, Baker is probably watching this. And, because of what he's done, he... He probably is going to attempt to ban or block this on YouTube on account of me revealing information. But I thought I'd clarify to any YouTube officials if they happen to be watching this. He has made a few videos about me without my permission. So if this video is getting blocked, you better block his too because that's just that ain't that just ain't fair if I get if I'm the one getting punished and he gets off scot-free. But, I mean no ill will towards him, but he does need to listen. Simple as that. And, yeah, Abigail's right. I, I do need to continue to toy review. This, I don't mind talking about this, and as she can vouch, I can talk, on hours, talk for it on hours on end. So, for the mutual purpose of everyone no more but y'all can talk in DMs on Discord if you want I'm sure Abigail can explain the entirety of the situation and any info that you need but the basis of it I need time to figure this out I don't want to rush into any decisions and if you Elliot's anime keep asking that does make it seem more and more like you are associated with Baker, because you're doing exactly the same things as goons are doing, and him, so it's making it really hard for me to tell tell if you're telling the truth. I, I feel like you are, but I do want to double check before I jump into anything. As why I said, Abigail, maybe you can check out his YouTube channel. There's one video, but... I'm doing a live stream on Transformers, so I can't exactly do that. But, that little rant information explanation session out of the way, now, um, let's put him 
or Nim over there. And then now In case you can't read it, that says push to fire. That says insert missile, trying to show the mi where the missile goes, which I'll show. And that's essentially saying safeguard attaches to vehicle. That's step one. I'll just kind of go through these a little bit at a time. I'll of course show it. I'm just letting you get a look at what is going on here. This is for people who, if they get the transformer, they can stop the video at any time and double check and make sure they got the instructions right in case for whatever reason they have the transformer and don't have the instructions. And then that's just basic battery info, yada, yada, yada. And there. Now, ow! My arm seriously hurts. Now, I am going to be mean to use this. Now, first things first, as you can see, this little guy's safeguard, and then, sorry if you can't see, but I, if I don't grip this right, I run the risk of breaking them. Essentially, he pops off and can go right in this space. This is specifically associated with him or any subsequent molds or recolors. And as you can see, some gears, that's the Autobot symbol and that's the window. Now, I will transform him in just a bit. First priority though, transforming and showcase safeguard a bit more. But first, <coughs> better turn the fan on. Last thing I want is me passing out from heat while on video. Okay, we'll do Elliot's anime. Oh, um, well, right here, I don't know if any other mini cons can fit in there. Eh, yeah. Well, if that was in reference to the cough, that was because of the fact I was, I've just been coughing a lot lately. Abigail can, and anyone who's talked to me in the past year and a half, including my own mom and grandparents, can vouch for that. But if you're talking about the me being hot, it was just simply because I had the lights on and the fan was off. So, room, door shut, lights on, long sleeve shirt, living in a very hot place. You you put two and two together. But, as I can also many cons fit in there. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I guess by theory they can, but I don't have any to test that theory, and until I do a tutorial review, I'm not sure I want to risk it. I know they can on the arms, but I think that one, unless it's another version of safe, another version of that Minicon, it ain't going to be able to fit in there. Period. Don't quote me on that, though. Anywho, this is his cyberplanet key. Let's see if I can get a better view of it. Uh, 
as you can see, starting from the big thing, come on camera, yeah, that's Earth, Speed, Jungle, and Giant Planets with the Autobot symbol. I call this the key of time and space. And this is the underside. It looks different from most keys. Now, according to the box, as you can see, right, right here, it's supposed to be gold. And it calls it the universal key. I call it the key of time and space because, well, one, it looks like a that little thing there makes it look like a watch. And two, besides that, it'll in the show it actually is what allows Vector Prime to essentially travel through time and space. So it makes sense. Speaking of which, inserting it makes this happen. Now I will show that later again. Now, of course, boom, and a boom. That's step one. And then you figure out how to hold the thing. <laughs> and then you take these and essentially get them all out like that. And then you boom. Nope. Do that. Now those little pegs, they or holes, they fit onto these little pegs here. Um. Hmm. Oh, uh, well, I will be doing that sound again. It does something else in robot mode after that sound. Let me see if I can. Yeah, pop out chat might be better in this case. That way I can actually see what's going on and don't have to keep swapping back and forth. Now, after that, uh, yeah, I realized I didn't shoot the missile. I'll, I'll do that after I transform them back. Already in the middle of transforming them, so it would be a time waster if I just did it now. But let's, I hope I don't accidentally launch it out while doing this. But you do that. Uh, Why? That was not at all helpful. I almost hurt myself in the area that no guy ever needs to hurt themselves. If you watch America's Funny Home videos even once, you know what part of body that is. Or if you're a guy that just has a good sense of direction and saw what just happened. <laughs> that works too. Either way, I am thankful that I didn't do that. But in case you didn't see, you turn the head around. And actually, no, Transformers aren't that complicated. These are actually very easy compared to the movie ones. I don't know what they... What ha yeah, I'm just lining the chin up with a little line. Um, let's see if I can... Yeah. That line right there. I just did the line it up. And they're not actually complicated, dude. I mean, I can see that, but it depends on which mold. Some of them you can transform with your eyes closed. Some you can take five hours transforming because the stupid instructions miss a part. Now, these go down like that. There we go. Now, next thing, 
I'm gonna move this over here, yada yada yada. Now, none. I actually don't have a hard transformer to transform. They're all extremely easy. Now, this is where it gets a bit annoying. Boop, and then a boop. Now, if I move his arm up like that, I can re-Power Link's safeguard via that, if it even focuses, yep, it ain't focusing, on to, nope, nope, don't mess up on you. I almost made him drop. Uh, well, when I was younger, I would play every day. I even used a few of them as a tub toy. I now regret this horribly. But, yeah, that's essentially... Safeguard doubles as Vector Prime's personal... Nope, nope, that ain't... Obvi okay, that's not going to work. It Safeguard actually works as his personal gun. Now, if I do that, it might make more sense if I actually go and, as you can see, this is a sword. Boop. It's called rinsing, I think. And I never pronounced it in the show. Let's actually, let me see if I can actually find how to spell it. Um, Prime sword. Let's see if I can actually find it here. Find on page S W O R D. Um, using his sword, his sword, his sword, his sword. Ah, R H I S L I N G. Riesling, I think? I don't know. I mean, your guess is as good as mine. I seriously don't know. But, anywho, the sword. Is what allows them to open up dimensional gateways, yada yada yada. Oh, um, one where I live, I have really good luck with batteries and not corroding. I mean, I understand. My mom had a horrible experience with a Barbie doll when she was younger and the batteries corroded. So, my family is really big on making sure batteries don't corrode. Myself included, but I'm not going to be taking them out at the end of the review, I can tell you that. I appreciate you for your concern, but I can do, I can do that myself. But anywho... Guess that's supposed to be 
with this. I think it would have made more sense had they give than two arms two sound effects. As in this one, it would make that sound when you when you when you like do put it up like this and then move boom 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 like that and then the one with the sword just make the sword sound oh I, under I understand Leon 113 I, I wasn't fussing I'm just saying thank you for your input but I got it taken care of don't don't worry I I take real good care of my toys strangely enough there was one toy that I left batteries in for 15 years. Everyone, my, everyone in the house was like, "Well, Michael, you're not going to be able to use that." And I'm like, "Why?" And they're like, "Because the batteries are corroded." And I said, "There's nothing coming out of it. No liquid. No brown stuff. No nothing. No signs of corrosion." And they're like, "Well, it might be corroded." And I'm like, "It might not be." So they checked and it wasn't corroded and they're like, how is this not corroded? And yet something else of mine was. So I understand. We actually have a household rule about that due to how due to how much it is. But anywho, this goes in here yet again. Now that sound finishes. And now this does. That kind of wasn't so epic. <laughs> I just don't understand why the engine noise re really happens. It only works so long as the Sire Planet keeps endo. But anywho, that goes back here. Now on the show, I think he had two. But yeah, there's the Autobot symbol in there. I don't know if he had that on the show, as he never had that part part of his body shown. I mean, Safeguard was either on there, or something was blocking that. Like a mountain, or an explosion, or something. So you could never really see that that specific detail. And I don't know what it is, but where I am, we have random Christmas ornaments when I was younger that were made of glass. I have no idea if we still had them, have them, where it looks like part was cut open. That, his chest thing just reminds me of that. But anywho, what's the hands? Whoa, they're supposed to be up. I guess it went down on its own. Anywho, down and down. That and that. Oh, hello. Hey, work here. And yeah, fan gears, yada, yada, yada. Now, one thing I noticed about this, as you can see, there's a peg there, and if it'll, yeah, as you can see, right there, it has an opening. It looks like that's supposed to connect to that peg, but as you can see, it doesn't. So I have no idea if that's a molding issue on mine, or they just canceled it at last minute. Because they are notorious for that. And that's probably him standing up as the best he can. Yada, yada, yada. Now, come on. 
or go to my here camera. Then you turn the head back around. I am picky about making sure everything is connected right. So, yeah. And then... Yeah, I would. And I can... I actually tried, but it, the thing is, the arm is like too low. The peg is like half a millimeter higher than the hole that it's supposed to peg into. So I'm like, I mean, unless I physically like cut out a new hole, it, it ain't going in. Period. That's why I was saying I think it should. Like here. This little indent here and these little these little things here, when I first was transforming them, those weren't connecting and it was like this. That's why I was saying I don't know if it's something was mine or a problem with this mold as a general whole. I mean, hey, works on yours great, but it ain't working that way on mine. But anywho, I thought this is how it was. And because everyone was fussing at me, don't break it, don't break it, I didn't bother pushing. But I know that looked aesthetically wrong, so I pushed, and then, boop, it works. Now, I mean, I did have some other issues with this. Now, of course, move this down. Uh, uh, ah, hello, hello, hello. Now, the back of the legs here, you can see it almost goes flush with that. Not entirely, as it's just slightly off, and you can tell that. That goes there, and then boom and boom. Those click into place. Now here's where it's annoying. As you can see, when you open up this one, it almost goes completely vertically. Now on this one, the top goes, but the bottom won't. And if you're wondering how I did that on how it was that way the first time, it actually had a bit of a mold issue on the hinges. So I, I can't really show it on camera because if I do, I run the risk of breaking. But essentially, I kind of push in with my nail... And I can get it to work. So I know this one had a few bits of molding issues. And I know there's a Galaxy Force repaint of Vector Prime. I mean, I know there was an issue with one of my... With my Transformers animated Bumblebee toy, where the stingers wouldn't go all the way in. I did some research, found out... I saw, I saw that was just how it was made. And then I got the Elite Guard Bumblebee repaint... And they went in all the way, so I didn't know what the heck was going on. I randomly found on TF Wiki that was a molding issue that they corrected late in the developmental line. So I guess I just got one of those that wasn't like that. Okay, I'll try that. Let's see if it actually... Thank you! Seriously, dude, thanks! I've been trying to figure it out ever since I got the stupid thing. That looks much better. See that, ladies and gentlemen? This is why you do live stream toy reviews. You can get input from people who have the toy. <laughs> wow. Uh, well, I'm at a loss of what to say now. <laughs> I did not expect that to happen. Okay, then.
one of the good reasons for making this a toy review. Now this. As you can see, Safeguard is like a Cybertronian, well actually it's probably Gigantion as he comes from Gigantion. Fighter jet thing. Oh, hello, ow, I... No, dang it! Hello! No, 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 Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Hmm. <sighs> oh, dang, 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 dang. Thank goodness I didn't move the chair! It... His arm literally fell off and went under the wheel. The very back wheel. You know, it's probably the one thing I hate most about mini cons. <sighs> you gotta be really careful. All transformers have though have parts and that'll pop out if too much force is applied. The problem is mini cons opinion of too much force is much less than others. As you can see, those are thrusters, and you can probably see the fingers there. But let's see. Those feet go there. Yada, yada, yada. And then that whole thing goes down. I don't know what it is, but one of these feet kind of goes up higher than the other. That is essentially him in robot mode. So, yeah. Now, those, I don't know what they are. I'd say guns, but yeah. And this is one of the few Transformers where it looks like he has abs. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just find that interesting. Anywho, Transforming back. Oh, yeah. Come on. It's kind of showing up, but as you can see, little and dense snare. And then there's Things that they can fit into there. Ah, there we go. The two interconnect. Okay. Like so. I know that may be hard to see, but mini cons are relatively easy to do compared to everything else. Now, that that's there. You repower links him. Right there. Be careful, that one snip that one fits in a bit extra snug. To the point I've almost broken it trying to take it out. So I gotta be careful how far I push it in. But as you can if I angle this all right, now this little black thing right there, that's the missile launcher. You can do it while this is on, but still.
there. That's as far as that missile goes. And ah. so, ooh, you land right now. <laughs> hey, but I don't really play play with the transformers. I have occasionally fiddled around with them while I'm talking to people on Discord. Abigail can vouch for that. But yeah, let's let's see here. Now, as a vector primes bio info from the Cyber Planet key. Okay, Vector Prime is a transformer from the earliest days of Cybertron's history. There is a legend of the ori of certain original transformers built by Primus before he took the shape of of the planet Cybertron. It has been rumored that Vector Prime is actually one of these original thirteen. So, yeah, there's that. Now I better. I better go ahead and find the stuff about Starscream. If I can spell the word star right, I somehow spelled Starak. I somehow added a Q in between the T and the A. I don't even know how I managed that. Anywho, from what it says on here, and dang, press a button and now I gotta find it again. Okay, Starscream, the backstabbing general of Megatron, has always been a jet of some kind. The Transformers Cybertron version of Starscream is no exception. The design team working on TF's Cybertron, which obviously means Transformers Cybertron, borrowed element from the fan favorite comic book series The War Within to create this all new Starscream look. Which is this guy right here. Though, I kind of hate him, kind of love him. I hate him because of the fact some genius decided it would be a bright idea to completely mess up the colors. I mean, every little part in its maroon is supposed to be white, or this silverish color. And every part in its silverish is supposed to be bright red, like the Autobot symbol. So not only did they do the colors in reverse, they put the wrong shading. But, eh, anywho, as you know, he's a Decepticon, or should know, except in a few alternate reality variations where he actually swaps over to being an Autobot. Yeah, and they're not, actually the thing is, they're not supposed to. And they look like them, I, I'm, I ain't gonna deny that, but... I actually did some research, and they weren't actually planning on making this one in America. And they got the colorations right for the Japanese Galaxy Force version. They just kind of got lazy with this one. That's actually what I read some read via the TF Wiki, essentially. Now, and I did not aim right. Let's try that again, shall we? And now I got to wait for it to readjust. Dang it, that messed up again. Well, okay, take three. There, that's what it was supposed to do. Oh boy. Why do I have to live in one of the states that's actually hot in the middle of winter and fall? And more importantly, why do I have to be in a house that has a gosh awfully horrible air conditioning unit? And before anyone starts saying it's probably because the house is old, it ain't old. It's about as old as me. If anything, I'm older than the house. 
Only by a few months, but still technically older, I think. I'd have to do some research to check that, but either way, it's just all the cold air winds up on the other side of the house, and all the hot air winds up back here. And the other side of the house is my grandparents' room, so they end up complaining about the cold while me and my mom, because we live on this side of the house, complain about the heat. Uh, I know about Dirge, but I have not heard about Ramjet. Also, you accidentally talked the word all treat, G1 Coneheads. <laughs> I was actually wondering if there was one of Ramjet for that exact purpose, but for the life of me, the only one I seem to find is a Legend of Cybertron variation. Not a, not one this size. I mean, I can see how someone could paint it that way. In fact, I'm probably going to find a way to get a bunch of them and just repaint them in every single coloration so I have all six Seekers, or more, to, because there have been others, like Slipstream, the only female one, Acid Storm, this, that, and the other. But I guess I'll figure that out in a sec. Oh, boy. Anywho, Ah. Yeah, I know about Shattered Glass Star Scream, I guess I guess I just wasn't realizing. But anywho <coughs> Now as you can see he's got a lot of weapons. The missile now, he's also got two laser guns on each wing. I'll show this side since it's easier. He's got these this bit of landing gear, the two Decepticon symbols. I can probably show that better while it's bound. But there's also the fact of these laser guns. Now, what annoys me is on the show, those things can flip forward and rotate like turrets. Now they can on Supreme Star Screen, but this one they're just molded straight on. That's why I'm saying while well, Um well actually the thing is I'm gonna buy the Supreme Class Star Screen and repaint this one. Besides, I'm always interested in repainting Transformers anyway, so... Plus, I kind of like painting. Strange, considering I hate the odor of paint. <laughs> but... Every artist has weird qualities. Abigail, I know for certain, can attest to that. As she is an artist herself. But... And then there are these missiles, which I think I have lost some paint on one of them, but I can't remember because when I, a few of them when I, few Transformers when I opened, there was something on them. Like right here. I don't, it, it'll probably be easier if I do. He's got a strange residue there. I don't know if that's paint or what it is. But 
as you can see, he's a Decepticon. Yay. Or maybe Boo, because I don't really like Decepticons, but as a Christian, I'm not going to be a jerk to them. Now, if I can do this right... I mean, you can barely see, but you can see a little cockpit in there. Complete with what looks like a chair and a dashboard. No, I can't make it out that well because unless I'm holding it to the light in a certain way, it it won't it won't show up, period. Now This is annoying because this is the missile launcher and it's really stiff. Also, as you can see, it has a three-way insert sign. Oh, by the way, for Vector Prime, this is the missile and he has a, essentially a universal plug-in for the missile. By that, I just, as I keep saying, I just mean it doesn't matter which way you really plug it in. Oh! Also, right here is the bio. Constantly plotting behind his leader's back, Starscream is using the Decepticon forces left under his command on Earth to further his own ambitions. He desires the power granted by the planet key, believing it will finally... Yeah, it will finally give him the power to destroy Megatron and the Autobots. With a mighty array of weapons, including his fearsome Null Ray cannons, interesting tidbit, all, most all versions of Starscream have Null Ray cannons, he is second to none in aerial combat and skill with an Energon Blade. Now, uh, I just really like how the Autobots, this is purple, I mean, purple. Well, I just completely messed that up. No, the Autobots, that's red, and the Decepticons, it's purple. It really helps in figuring out which is which when you're an idiot and somehow don't know. <laughs> but if you're a fan of Transformers, you don't need color to even tell who's what. But I guess not everyone gets that. But anywho, plus... I'm actually getting both because in the process of the show, if you remember the show, Starscream gets bigger later. So this this Starscream is fine for the majority, but in the times where he gets bigger, Supreme Starscream will be better. So... As you saw, I separated the missile... Uh, launch already. That's step one. And then boom, 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 boom. Da -da -doom. That goes there, there, there. And that's essentially the end of it. Then Starscream's there. And there, there, there. And yeah. That's that. So. Um. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. What? Oh. I didn't notice that. It had a coloration difference. I doubt it will show up on camera, so I'm not showing that. Besides that, it might have already, so be re that will be a bit redundant. But... As you can see, boom, boom, and then...
And while I won't deny that Galaxy Force Transformers are cool, me and my papa were talking about it, and even if I get it was my own money, we thought it would be mutually better to just get the American variation. Plus, I was wanting to get these at a very young age anyway, so that was before I even knew about Galaxy Force, so I mean, at the end of the day, one day I do plan on collecting every single Transformer toy ever made. That is something I'm still debating on how, when, how and when I'm going to even be able to accomplish such a feat. Because literally any person on the face of the planet can tell me, dude, are you crazy? That's going to be crazy expensive. Uh, and there are a few of them that are exclusive and you won't be able to buy them, yada, 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 this, that, and the other. To which I am just like, I know. That's why I'm debating of how the heck I'm going to achieve that goal. But at the end of the day, if I do, I'm going to somehow make a stop motion saying that somehow involves all of them. But even if I somehow find them, they're still a matter of money, which again, I'll have to figure out how the heck I'm even going to get that. And even if I find a product, get and have the money, which I'm more than likely going to get one like these, that's straight out of the box where the box has not been opened. I know many people would be fussing at me f for many reasons as to why that's a bad idea. But, hey, you collect your way, I'll collect mine. You, And fine, you don't like what I do. Well, too bad. You're not the one doing it. I am. So, I guess uh, the point I'm trying to get at is what? Hmm. Weird. I don't even know where these little lights are coming from. Ah. Okay. But, yeah. I mean, I know as a Transformer, yeah, and there, even my mom has, she's a collector too. Not necessarily to the point she has like a Transformer or a Barbie doll or something collection, just to the point of she understands collector's value. Many times she'll be like, why are you opening that? That would diminish the collector value. But for me, I collect not for the collector value. I collect for the nostalgia value or the personal value. As in, hey, it may be collector value to everyone else, but I don't care about collector value to everyone else. I care about what's the value of it to me. Because it could be worth $200 trillion to someone else, but to me, it's worth less than a penny, or vice versa, where you could get something, and it would, and they and most people would be like, "Dude, that that's only a cent or so," and I'd be like, "Well, yeah, but to me, it costs it's a more value than two trillion dollars." There's just some things that you can't put a price on. But anywho, this is where it's gonna get a bit annoying. Ugh. I'm trying to find a good place to put the camera. And I don't know if I'm actually going to... how I'm going to get it, or if I'll have to adjust plans. There's also the option of somehow finding a way to find people who have the product. Mmm... That's why I'm saying I'm debating of if I'm even going to do that. I don't... I haven't set any plans in place other than it's something I want to do. Other than the general I want to somehow get access to them and make a stop motion, I have not put any salt into it. I'm at a stalemate. Too many viable options and too much money, too many this, too little that, yada, yada, yada. I have currently no way to make the decision. Right now, I think it's just a stick names and a hat and draw one <laughs> kind of situation. I'm thinking something else of the Unicron trilogy, like 
Armada or Energon, I don't know. But either way, Cybertron, I don't care if I collect any of the others, I just want to get all the Cybertron ones. Mainly because I actually checked in the Guinness Book of World Records. That's actually a world record if if you manage to get all the Transformers in a single series and they're all in the original packaging. Even if you open them out of the original packaging, just the fact that you collected them all and got them all new, unused, it's enough to be in the Guinness Book of World Records. I'm also wanting to use that to transform them as fast as possible. Like Firebot and Thunderwing, I did enough practice, I could transform them to honor modes in less than 10 seconds. Even with big, gigantic fingers. So I am one of the Cybertron series as a whole. I know that much. From there, I don't know what the heck I'm going to do. But anywho, this is a bit annoying. Of course, separate those. Sorry if you can't see. It just all kind of... Yeah, sorry. It's just if I don't do it right, I run the risk of breaking him. And this was tough to get. So if I break him, I end up, because it comes packaged with Vector Prime and I'm wanting a specific one, I'm going to end up having to get another Vector Prime with this star screen. If they did them separately, I could. It wouldn't be that big an issue. And because Toys R Us doesn't exist anymore, essentially, yada, 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 this, that, and the other. Oh, and as you just saw, I separated that. Now, here's where it becomes tricky. I'm trying to separate it without chipping away the paint or anything. But, yeah... You do that. And then you flip that. Nope, nope. I got them. As you can see, this has to be pulled out first. And then this goes in. Now, um, oh, I also noticed this little box sign goes into this little crevice here, so you through whatever means you can. Hello, it's his head. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Anywho, uh, still my kid at heart. But, yeah. Unhinge those and flip them up. And that's annoying because, as you can see, that little peg fits into this little hole. But if you... Don't do it right. The hand will kind of move on its own. And then, boom. And as you can see, um, that hole was connected to this. And I also noticed little tiny VTOL engines in there. But, yeah, you just... Hey everyone, say hello to yourselves. <laughs> that's that's the chat. <laughs>
<laughs> oh man. Uh, anywho, now this is a bit of an annoyance. I can separate these two. Just takes a lot of effort. Now, I'll flip them down like that, and as you can see, That's a little clip right there. And there, those two things clip together. Um, Abigail, you still on? Uh, just a quick roll call check saying who who's still currently watching. Why the fling of smack? Ow, I went forward the wrong way. Um, so, who's still on now? And, more accurately, are y'all enjoying the stream? Hello. Okay. Any whoa Anywho As you saw it or should have seen it's yeah, just ignore that. That's there for a multitude of reasons. It landed right over here. Whoa! And I almost fell right over there. That would have been not good. Um, guys, am I coming in loud and clear or what? I'm asking because I'm about done with the stream and I want to make sure everything's working okay. Okay, I guess. Well, then, there is that. Oh, yeah. And of course, I know, I know most people do this, but 
weapons go in hands anyway, so I'm not going to mention. Oh, and this is how you put the weapon in. You stick it in the hand. I mean, where else are you going to put a handheld weapon? It literally is named handheld weapon. Anywho, I guess you guys aren't going to be responding to who's still in the stream. But anywho, this is the Cyber Planet Cave. Now, Jetfire should have one just like this, but with the Autobot symbol, but doesn't. Oh, hello, hello, hey. Now, the Sire Planet key goes in here, as you can see. Dang, dang, I, no, no, no. Boom. And the Sire Planet key activates. Well, Battle Blades. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. Anywho, this was also the first Decepticon of the series. So, yeah. Um, that's... <laughs> okay, maybe not do that. Hey. So, yeah. That's pretty much it. Now, if I don't rip the cord... Um, I... Okay. Um, anywho, you just slide those back in. And before I slide this one in, I should probably say that little thing right there should probably be green. I don't know what else there is, but... Boom. Now. Move these back up. Undo this. Make those go back that way. Flip the arms like that. And now, with the feet, you do that. Flip those in. And as you can see, I just did that. Now, I'll do what I can to show this, but I got to make sure I'm doing this right or it will break. Or at least I'm scared it will. And I'm not going to risk it. Oh, yeah, probably should have moved those. 
Now, uh, this side, before I do, as you can see, there is a little thing right there, and it goes into a little opening right there. Dang it. Yeah. Yeah, you can should be able to see there. Now there's also all that little detail. Most of that's hidden, but ow, my hands. You slide all that in. And then once that foot goes in, whoa, hello, don't need to make it slip. Now, this is all rubbery. Two holes in there, two pegs in there, and then I, boop. And then, there's a peg here and an opening there. And you just... If you can see what you're doing, you just push it in, and there you go. That's Starscream for you. I do find it aesthetically annoying was was where the screws are, but it's a toy that requires screws. So yeah, what you gonna do about that? <laughs> Anywho, over here. So boom. Boom. So, uh, before I get off, anyone got any questions or anything they want to say to me? Because I'm wanting to get back to Discord and then do some other stuff. So, now's the chance if you want to ask me a question. Going once, going twice, going Cybertron. Okay, and I would say going, going, gone now, but that sounds weird, so I won't. But then again, I kind of did. Anywho, well, Bye, guys, for now. Uh, let me make sure I have everything set right. Yada, yada, yada. Star screen. And a close. Vector prime. Sword. Safeguard. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, close. So, yeah. Bye, guys. Now. Stop the stream in three, two, one.